Matt's asking a hard question. How long do we go? <laughs> uh, as long as you want, Jessica. <laughs> Alex takes you to answer this question. Is there a worker cooperative movement in the U.S. today? Oh, he's asking the movement question. Is this really a movement or are we just, you know, patting ourselves on the back? Are we trying to make, make much of something? Um, I don't know. What do you think? I hate that question. <laughs> Matt also said laugh out loud. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he probably knew I was going to say I hate that question. Um. And, you know, you guys can answer, too. It's not just me. I would say yes, but, okay, I'm not one of those people. I, know, I have people who I can spout off all the requirements of something to be a movement, and I can't do that. So I can't go through all the requirements and say how we've met them. Um, if you guys can, you can, you can do that. I would say the reason why I think there's a movement is because of all the activity that I can track from over the last 25 years, right? So starting with, you know, very few worker co-ops, almost, you know, only a cult of people even knew about them in the U.S., to now we have a lot more happening. We have what, at least 10 to 12 cities promoting, you know, and putting money into worker co-ops. We've got more worker co-ops sprouting up. We've got, you know, the U.S. Federation and Dowie Democracy at Work Institute that are raising millions of dollars, right? So I think, you know, and that, as I said, worker co-ops are one of the faster growing sectors of the co-op movement in the U.S. To me, all that says there's a movement. And then there's groups of us, actually different factions, right? To me, that also is a good sign that it's a movement, right? There's some different factions. Some of us argue with each other about certain strategies and outcomes and things like that. So to me, all that means it's a movement because I've seen growth, you know, continuous, sustained growth over 20, at least 25 years. I know there was a lot of, uh, not a lot, but there was probably the 70s was probably another period where there were a lot of worker co-ops and that petered out. It looks like this time we might be sustaining the movement more than from a debt. Well, it's already more than a decade, right? Um, so yeah, if you think about time, growth, development, um, I feel like there's a movement, but I don't feel like there's a what's the word? Um, we're still a little fragmented, right? Because there's a bunch of us who say we're in the movement, but I'm not sure we all agree on exactly the same things of what the values are of the movement or even what the hope for outcomes, right? Because some of us, I think in GEO, right? I'm one of those who I value the worker co-op structure not for itself but for where it can take us as human beings and as a society right and i'm interested uh in worker co-ops taking over capitalism if possible right but i don't know that everybody in the worker co-op movement agrees with that or believes that or is involved in a worker co-op for that reason Yeah, I, I mean, it's a it's a difficult question. I'll kind of uh, dodge it by saying I think there's a movement and there will continue to be a movement in the larger economy um, towards worker co-ops because of late stage capitalism hollowing everything out, sucking all the value out of everything. You know, uh, so just today uh, posted an article uh, or a gleaning from uh, about veterinary cooperatives next big thing because why are all of a sudden veterinarians as a group talking about worker co-ops because a private equity has been taking over buying all their practices and um, oppressing and exploiting everybody and this this is how you know the the rest of the economy is going and so i think the movement uh, for worker co-ops is not going to come from us it's not from cooperators 
Like it's from people who have never cared about or thought about co-ops before. And all of a sudden they're being, their job is being put, you know, at risk or they've been fired or they've got a big pay cut or whatever. And they look for something else. And fortunately now, I think that there is enough like information online that, you know, it's not that hard to stumble across this, this alternate model. Um, so I think we'll continue to see that whether or not we who are already cooperators are an actual movement. I mean, I think it depends. Uh, I mean, some people, I know some people who are worker co-op, like in worker co-ops and definitely don't think of themselves as part of any movement at all. They think of themselves as a part owner of a business. Like that's it. <laughs> so, you know, for them, there is no worker co-op movement or they're not part of it anyway. Um, even if, even though they're a worker owner and we might want to count them, um, but then, yeah, there are others of us who are, you know, actually do have some kind of social transform transformative goals, or at least that we're pushing towards. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know if, if we're a, a technically a movement or not. I think it doesn't really matter. Um, we're we're coming up one way or another. I was laughing at what Matt wrote in the private comment, which is, "See, it was a good question." There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but on, on that topic, though, of, of um, you know, the worker cause ha having within the, the potential for greater things, um, we do have two live streams where we try to push that conversation forward. Uh, it's GeoLive number three, which is uh, what's so special about worker co-ops and number GeoLive number eight, Solidarity Economy and Transformative Change. Um, I think we need to have another one. Uh, 